Hi, it's that crazy history teacher. I'm here again with more economics. This is part one. Do you remember the three questions that every country must answer when it's developing an economic plan? what to produce, how to produce, who are we going to make it for? These are the questions a country answers to figure out what type economic system it has or will have. A traditional economy is based on the customs of the past. You do what your family did. If your father was a farmer, you're probably going to be a farmer. If your mother was a seamstress, you'll probably be a seamstress. In a traditional economy, the people barter for the goods and services that they need. They do not use money to buy these things. Traditional economies are very rare. They only occur in small villages or remote locations where the people are not in contact with modern people very often. In a command economy, all economic decisions are made by the government. The government decides what's made, who's going to make it, and who's going to buy it. Countries with command economies are usually communist countries. In fact, many people call it a communist market, not a command market. Command economies haven't been very successful. Many of the countries that had command economies no longer do. In a market economy, economic decisions are made by the people. Market systems are based mostly on supply and demand. Sellers will make things that they think people will buy. If no one wants to buy it, no one will be willing to make it. In a pure market economy, there would be no governmental control at all. This could be very scary. Think about there being no government control over the food that is produced in our country. How do we know that what the package says is in there really is, if no one ever checks? Because some government regulation is needed, there are no pure market economies. This means you don't have to worry about things like your salad being made from these scary vines. There are no pure command or pure market economies. All countries land somewhere between the two. The economic continuum gives you a good idea of how economically free a country is. For example, North Korea is at 4.2, very close to pure command. And Canada and the United States are near the market end of the continuum because their citizens enjoy lots of economic freedom. Well, that's it for part one. Make sure to check out part two for even more exciting things about economics.